So, what's up? One second. One thing. Friends, fiends, and inevitably, sex machines. What is up? It is I, your host, Prince, along with Poopster, and for the third fucking time, we got Rotten Socks, our favorite motherfucker, <laughs> on Halloween. Everybody loves Rotten Socks, especially Bill. <laughs> right. We're not going to get into that, but... Man, happy Halloween, motherfuckers. I'm going to curse because I'm something, and I always curse. Fire it up. Fire it up, man. Something, something, something. So, we are here tonight on a Thursday night, Friday, or Friday. What the fuck did I say Friday? A Thursday night, a Halloween night in 2019, and the world is going to shit. No, I, I, who knows where it's going? I mean, we've got some things to talk about today, uh, some issues, some interesting things. I think there's someone against us trying to suppress the information we're trying to bring because we we have such important things to say my internet completely shut the fuck off and left you guys wondering exactly what happened i i have no idea i it might be the reptiles it might be the ghost of epstein it might be i don't know who else guys who else let's just throw out names the rich and famous come on man that's too general <laughs> You and your, you and your 50 cent words, brother. The guys who, uh, who kill Epstein, man. They're, they're oh, shit. Ones. Oh, you know what? It could be free no, node gate. Backs. Free node gate. They know we know. Well, <laughs> never mind. Never mind. I need to hire a bodyguard now. We need to hire some bodyguards. So, anyways, we cut out. And now we're back. So yeah. I subverted the system by uh, manipulating the flux capacitor and adding the intermix <laughs> ratio to our warp drive engine, uh, the antimatter, you know, and now, now we're back on. I just mixed way too many franchises there, but never mind. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm new actually on another network. I'm going to, before I start here. Uh, this is the Power Hour with Poopster and Prince. I'm Prince. That's Poopster over there. Say hi. Hi. And then we've got Rotten Socks yet again for number three, no, a third edition. Say hi, Rotten Socks. Hello. Rotten Wheel on Twitter, at Rotten, Rotten Wheel. He is the authority on privacy, anonymity, privacy coins, etc., etc., so if you want, if you want to know anything, you should really just listen to him and, and, you know, forget the fact that he's going to punch you in the face if, if you don't act like a bastard, you know, or if you act like a bastard. So be nice. No, I'm just joking. Anyways, I've got be a request nice from to each other on party hard. Exactly. Party the fuck hard. So I've got another network here that I've been on for the past few days. Ryzen. And it's specifically for one channel, um, Random Music. And I have a, a user named Flunky from Germany. And he'd like me to say hi to Bookmarker in Hiding Shadow, whomever they may be. So hi, guys. And hi to Ryzen. Flux Capacitor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here we are, yet again, another Thursday. Um, California is burning to the ground. Well, Los Angeles area, anyways. Yeah, man, that's sad. No, it's actually it's it's pretty bad. Yeah, I mean, um, 
the one night I was working at the hotel and it was, I mean, you could see smoke in, uh, in the air. You could definitely smell. And we had a guest that, that, uh, complained and that had asthma. You know, they were okay, but, uh, still it, it's not good. I mean, in, we've had 8,000 some acres burn, but why didn't we rake it? Right. That's what Trump says. Yeah. <laughs> You should have raked, dudes. <laughs> I think you blame the firefighters too, but that's neither here nor there. Days out of the blue. What out happens the there? <laughs> what you mean? Yeah, that affects my uh, niece out there. Like, yeah, two or three. I think it was two days. Well, since I I, I work at a hotel, uh, we we did have several guests. Um, from the Sonoma area, for example, uh, who are staying there strictly uh, because they were evacuated and could not come back to their homes. Um, so, you know, that's that's a thing. And then you have the chance of lo losing everything you own. Uh, and that's because it's so dry. And the reason the fires start is because we had some sort of, we had a lot of wind. And uh, so it just, you know, one thing leads to another. But really, in terms of, of why it's so dry, I mean, maybe we've gotten, I think, two or three days of rain in two years, which is odd to me. I mean, uh, I, I guess you have your bad, your bad and your good years. But, you know, bef I remember years before we, we would get solid straight week or two of rain you know and uh now it's well now it's uh pretty much nothing i i don't know if i've mentioned on here but my yard is dirt it's literally dirt it used to be grass and if i had a little better you know landlord it probably would be but you know i don't really fucking care either way really because i you know i'm not going to go romp in the lawn or anything but that's the way it is. Uh, so whatever's going on, whether it's natural, you know, unnatural, it's definitely fucking us up here in Los Angeles, in the surrounding areas. Anything to say, guys? Uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe uh, throwing back the topic that you have some connectivity issues um, oh. and that we were talking before we right. went back live is that all these big I, ISP oh, they're yeah. just sucking oh, yes. your money the uh, and they're not ISPs. providing you with the service that you're being sold um, and that's very bad uh, and this isn't even related law, to net neutrality which is a different thing altogether I mean shit these these uh, internet service providers, you know, we were talking about this before we went back on and it cut out. They're essentially monopolies and they work together to corner specific areas. So they're like, okay, you get this part, I get this part, we're good. And Yeah, that's exactly right. No, it, it's fucked, man. Like, you know, you can't even get the competitors in a certain area, you know, like I'm locked into like Comcast. Oh yeah, well, I used to call them cockmast. Yeah, <laughs> cockmast. Cockmast or uh, crapcast. <laughs> that was before the cars actually gotten bad. Is, is a cockmast something that holds a penis up? I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have no clue. No, and, and the law itself, uh, and these big monopolies, as you're saying, um, they always uh, hinder. Mm -hmm any community local ISP that tries to uh, build their entire network to provide residential and business services right? because it's not convenient for them. So they're locked. Uh, they, even though they find the funding and they build anything that they can come up with, uh, they need to go to the legislators and once they meet with the law and the monopolies, it's rigged mm -hmm. because they cannot get through and they cannot get started right. doing that. And in some states, 
uh, I don't know the name of the ISP or, or the states even, but it does right. exist. If you look it up, there is uh, ONG, uh, non uh, non profit organizations really? that are trying to say, "Hey, so they're like let's organ- build community." local ISPs. Oh, to expand internet, to pro- in, in the guise of expanding internet service. access, basically to communities that don't have it, they're creating markets for themselves. That's, that's basically what it is, right? Yeah. Uh, it's- <laughs> but I'm glad that uh, at the very least, there is some examples uh, to set a precedent and wake some people up and the way it works, uh, as it always is, is that the people need to claim, the people need to right. raise their voices and ask for a better service. The sheeple. And, <laughs> yes. And if, <laughs> if more community local ISP come up, I never say that. Uh, they're going to be, they, that's going to reduce the prices. Mm-hmm. That's going to, uh, reduce the revenue, obviously. Yeah. That's going I've got to a short make... story actually about this specific thing. Okay. So, my family owns, it's a campground in Pennsylvania, okay? And it's kind of remote. Um, the only thing we could get was DSL, cause obviously the only thing are phone lines. So we, uh, I, I set up a mesh wireless network based on DDWRT at that time. It was with about seven or eight, uh, uh, WRT 54 GTMs, which are the WRT 54 Gs with, I think, eight megabytes of ROM. And, uh, so I put DDWRT Mega on all of them and made a mesh, uh, a mesh, uh, Wi-Fi network out of a bunch of them. And, uh, the problem was, was that the DSL was, was definitely not, you know, if there were too many people, it just, it was too slow. I mean, um, I forget the other, uh, the other custom router firmware right now off, offhand, but DDWRT is the one that I chose. Um, because it was specifically WRT based. I hope my internet didn't cut out. You guys still there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> Anyways, so to get internet, we called the cable company because the only other option in this case is cable. Uh, and to get cable down there, they said, oh yeah, we'll do it, but you have to pay for us to run the line all the way down your road where there's other houses and everything and expand their coverage area. I think it was like $7,000 or something like that. Um, and eventually they ended up having to do it. This is after I left actually. Um, and that, that, that mesh system that I set up actually in, uh, coax demarcation boxes, uh, uh, with indoor routers worked for quite a long time, more than I paid for it. I mean, I, I paid a small amount for setting that up. And it was ma- mainly just to serve, serve, uh, the, the park goers. But the cable thing, man, like, that's why we didn't go with it at first, because it was so fucking expensive that they wanted us to pay for them to expand their coverage area. I mean, like, we weren't the only people on the road. It's just, this guy, uh, Flunky, you're asking what the speed of the DSL back was back then. I think it was 512 or, 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 or something. It was, it was not adequate for, uh, for a five or six, uh, mesh, uh, router mesh network, um, hosting anybody. So basically when the people checked in, you said, please don't stream movies because if you do, <laughs> nobody's going to be able to use the internet. Uh, that was right around the time when Netflix was really like gaining popularity, but, Anyways, that's my little story about the shittiness of the of cable companies in general. Anything to add to that, guys? Poopster. Mine is uh mine always been with Comcast. Um my complaint is that they always raise the price. Well um service lately has been pretty nice actually. I haven't had any problem with the service, but you know, it's like every year you lock down the price and then they jacked it up like fifty, sixty dollars sometime. I know my father in law is like paying like two hundred dollars for right. internet and TV. Like why? Oh, yeah, you know? no, no, I'm able to get they it. They down, really but- gouge you, man. That's why we had the TV cut off. Actually, because it, it was just so expensive for for what? 
for shit you can just I stream. Do... Oh, he's talking. What's up? Go ahead. Spe- yeah, uh, so you just turn up gotta... the volume a little bit there, Mister Rotten Socks. You're 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 a bit in the background, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so the the key is to uh, you know, a lot of people know this trick, but threaten to leave and then try to negotiate a better price. Um, it, it works <laughs> for a certain t- period, and then they um, feel like, oh, you're just bluffing and then like okay why well, I, <laughs> I will quit and then try to back so you're saying like a strike yes yeah because you know losing one customer is a not really happen, big man. deal to there's, them there's too many fucking morons out there i mean look at look at our country look at the united states do you think like anybody's gonna unite <laughs> no <laughs> fucking crazy not. dude i mean i always like people call me yo hippie because i tell people that they need to work together but it's not about that. I mean, shit. You know, we're all we're all on the same flying rock, headed to the same destination, which is death. Why can't we? You know, why do we have to accelerate that for others just because we're afraid or we don't? Or, or we're. To be fair, I, I'm not being, hundred percent comprehensive on this issue because there are groups of people who who want specifically people like us to die, and I'm not going to get into that because they're they're. they're ideally against us and things but oh man that actually made me think about other things altogether but you know at its core even because of that is the reason that we all need to work together but what is this is this evolution is this darwin's law weeding weeding the 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 weak genes out by (laughs) i i don't know man really we're going to get into evolution, actually, because I was speaking with our um, our illustrious, the holiest Roger earlier today, and we got into a conversation about evolution and consciousness, and I seem to always have these conversations with people because I don't know. I think deep thing. I, you know, like, think. Right? Oh. <laughs> Yo, did we lose you? I heard no, a death. Oh, you heard. I'm still here. Okay. Did we lose Ron? No, but No, you just you just heard me like speaking difficult. lowly saying duh like kind of like a re- kind of like a you know, a person <laughs> who didn't have mental faculties to So that's probably why you thought I was cutting out. <sighs> you didn't hear right? the you didn't hear the beautiful voice of 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 the of the wonderful Prince McGee. I didn't right. know I had a last name, but I just made one up. Well, j- just so you know, mm-hmm. there is a project by the Institute for Local Cell. Oh. Weekly. Uh, Ooh, you cut out there for a second, man. Hello. S- you still there? <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I don't know. It's it's a conspiracy. I'm telling you, man. Poopster. They're on to you. All right, all right. Poops are still here. We're, we're still here. There's somebody trying to shut us the fuck down. So stop it, you you bastards. <laughs> we are being hacked. We we're are being, being, hacked. being hacked. Don't hack the hackers. I mean, I'm not a hacker, but Poops, there's a people hacker, and and Rotten's just, you know, he just hacks life. <laughs> <laughs> Rotten, uh, we don't know about that guy. He's just a <laughs> random guy. You know, he's just random, anonymous. You don't know. It's all cool. He could be in your living room. He could be somewhere. I don't know. But actually, that brings me to the point where, where uh, Ron Sox and I will be doing a uh, a new show regarding specifically anonymity, privacy, cryptography. Issues that are very important to everyone. And there are arguments that we get in all the time. And they're always the exact same arguments. So we want to knock this motherfucker out of the way and set it straight. So we're going to do a show about privacy issues. Yep. Um, Because we're sick of having the the same conversations. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's getting a new microphone. Maybe a Blue Yeti because they're good. But actually, I'm getting an AKG in the mail in a few days. 
Uh, and I'm waiting for my cracked laptop screen that my cat fucked up to to get fixed. But it's anyways, time to get a ThinkPad, Prince. Oh man, I, I'd love to get a ThinkPad, but I'm an audio person, and 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 you and can do audio like, and ThinkPad. Yes, we can, and I've done it for years. But you know, it won't break when the cat steps on it. That's for sure. I prefer Mac OS as a production environment because less things go wrong within it. You know, I have a ThinkPad that has a Mac OS. I, I've had Macintosh before too, man. Come on, you kidding me? Who do you think I am? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'll go to Hackintosh. I mean, but uh, really, and, and this laptop is 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 not even a year old. So, but I found a trick that someone told me. I, I don't know if I should even mention it because it's. I guess it's a secret. Um, but to get it repaired with a brand new screen. For three hundred and seventy-five dollars, as opposed to the seven hundred and fifty dollars that the Apple authorized repair store, not the Apple store itself, quoted me, which was fucking insane. Yo, I have a great idea for your sure. print, uh, sure. for your screen. Yes, you should send it to Louis Rosman. Who the fuck is that? <laughs> He's a meme guy for ThinkPads, man. He has a little repair shop for Apple, uh, like laptops in New York City. So the, a ThinkPad guy has a repair shop for Apple computers. Yeah, he's like a, a huge dude. Like, man, you're, you're he, he has a, his, my mind here. Look him man. up on YouTube. He's, he's got like a lo- big following. So is he going to fix it for less than $375 and give me a brand new screen? I don't know. Maybe hit him up. You know, he'll, he'll hook you up maybe. I don't know. Maybe well, even bring them to a podcast. What I was here. doing was I, I found one on eBay for $265 with, with shipping. And I ordered it with, uh, with, with the help of, uh, well, thanks to, um, uh, Bill actually and the holiest Roger. Um, I ordered it because, you know, things are kind of tight for me right now. And, uh, a day later, they canceled the order saying that the screen failed to pass QR. So I lost out on the $260 screen. There's nothing on there under $400. So I found out about this and I can get a brand new screen for 375 rather than a used screen with, from who knows what the fuck where, well, it's actually a display assembly, uh, specifically. Um, and, uh, so I found that I can do this brand new if I if I utter these special secret words at the Apple Store, which is flat rate repair. And I have to actually research it more because I'm not sure about it. But if it fucking works, man, I'm going to do it because I didn't go to the Apple Store already. I, I, would, I would never usually set foot in an Apple Store. I mean, I like mac os and i like macbooks they're they're actually very durable computers they last for very long this one's maxed out i mean my last one was maxed out too but the cat spilled beer on it she just knocked it over but what i'm saying is i'd rather pay 375 for a brand new screen than 400 for a used one <sighs> And yeah, Boopster, I'd like to buy a, a, a ThinkPad for four hundred or for four hundred dollars, maybe. But it wouldn't be what it is, and I'd have to get all new versions of Ableton and everything else because so. they're not transportable like that. Oh, it's very transportable. Then I'm not talking about the laptop. I'm talking about the software. You can put any software on, man. That's what oh, I'm talking man, about. My point. It's open. Oh, okay. You so can Pirate put Linux. You can put Windows. You what can about put the shit OS I paid X. for? That is what I'm talking about. Okay. Open. Well, when, when you buy when you buy a license for Ableton Live, you buy it for an operating system. You don't buy like. Actually, let me see. Maybe it does. If if I can use the same license, you should be able to. You know, I, I'm not going to look into this, but because I only have one hand, but that's what I assumed. I mean, and that's usually how it works with with software. I mean, you know, if you have keys for for a specific, for, specific, specific, why can't I say specific? But anyways, specific version, specific operating system. They're going to try to lock you into that because they want you to purchase more, obviously. Um, 
but I will look into it. But that is my main concern. And uh, like I said, I prefer Mac OS as a production environment because less can go wrong. And it's actually BSD based. Well, Lin uh, Windows is Windows. And sure, it has a Linux subsystem now, but it's still fucking Windows, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what not, do you hate about Mac thing. OS? What? What do you hate about Mac OS? It's not even Mac OS. It's more it's like Mac in general. Mac in general, more like the company Apple. You know, they, I hate them too. They, kinda, they just kind of shuffle you into my way around it, man. System, you know, I, the the thing is, like, you know, it is true. Douchebags use Apple computers. <laughs> whoa, for the most part. whoa, whoa! <laughs> and I'm a douchebag. No. I'm joking, guys. Right. I'm joking. I'm not being polarized. I'm not trying to divide people. But I would never own an iDevice. Um, I would only use MacBooks. I do have some, some G5 Mac Towers, but they're just kind of like end tables. But uh, I was going to use one for a Shoutcast server, but I just never got there. Anyways, I'm in it for, for the computers only. Uh, and yes, they are insanely expensive but their quality when it comes down to it. If sadly uh, true. I don't know about that. I mean I mean you 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 got two and it's both been broken, so Man, that's cause my fucking cat actually I can say that retinas are extremely fragile and now I'm re I'm realizing this unfortunately. Uh, cause it wasn't, you know, my cat, my cat's fat, but she's not like fucking huge, huge, gigantic. And it was an earbud that was in the corner that I left to burn in, plugged into the headphone slot all night. And my cat in the morning, she, she, she jumps all over the shit that I use because she knows it's going to get my attention. <laughs> she's kind of smart, but, yeah. uh, and she did that, and I didn't realize until later in the day, I turned the laptop on, and I saw this artifact in the screen. I'm like, what the fuck is that? And it took me like a few minutes to realize, oh, fuck, the, the, the screen is cracked? How the fuck did that happen? And then I realized, and it hit me. And then my heart went, shit! So here we are, and this is where we are now. <laughs> Anyways, uh, uh, so we, we got to, to Max somehow. We were talking about uh, cable companies, monopolies. <sighs> so what do you guys want to do? You want to get into the asshole of the week? Sure, yeah. All right, yeah, we'll, we'll try that. Just uh, So hold on one second. Let, let's uh, put some happy game show music. Yes, folks. It's that time of the week again. We're gonna talk about the asshole of the week. Every week, a new asshole with new shitty things that they do. Questionable morals, questionable ideals. All for you. Not really, it's all for themselves, mostly. But that's not the point. Here we go. Actually, it wasn't that one. But yeah. So yeah, asshole of the week. My friends, this week's assholes, because we're picking two, let me get to the article here. Rotten, Rotten's, Rotten knows about this. So we got Mark Zuckerberg and Jack Dorsey. Those are the assholes of the week. I don't know. Anyways, like I said, assholes of the week. Mark Zuckerberg, Jack Dorsey. Why? Start. I may, I may drop, but I'll be right back. Hold on. Okay. Well. Poopster? Yo, yes. Why? Um, I'm trying, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be judicious here and ask you guys why Jack Dorsey and Mark Well, Zuckerberg. let me, let me talk about uh, why they're in the news, right? That's so, exactly what I'm talking about, my yeah, friend. So, <laughs> Zuckerberg and 
diversify. Wow. Actually, you cut interview. out again on my end here, man. What? You cut out again on my end here. It's it's oh, not okay. me. I mean, my my shit's working, but that's this is weird. Like I it's said, weird. There's, there's something going on here tonight. Someone's trying to shut us the fuck down. So yeah. start again, my friend. Suppressing the voices of the people. Yeah. Free speech, my fucking ass. Yeah, free speech. That's exactly what uh, Zuckerberg's saying, that they will not uh, go after these uh, false political ads or whatever in the defense of uh, free speech, right? Yeah, that's so basically what that it is. that was the whole, uh, whole argument of them uh, being in the news. Yeah. So it's not so much Jack Dorsey, but... Zuck the fuck? What, what does uh? Because I don't really know Jack Dorsey. Please enlighten me. I know a, lot, a lot of people don't know who Jack Dorsey is. So, explain who Jack Dorsey is in relation to to this argument. Hold on, hold on. Okay, uh, Jack Dorsey came up with Twitter. It's like it's right. little baby. Good, good. Yeah, uh, yeah. He he goes on the podcast of Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan. I'm butchering oh, that Rogan. name, but Bro. you know who that is. Uh, <laughs> He, he gets on there and he talks about Twitter and he's right. Leah Baby and he talks about the hashtag and how mm-hmm. they come up with that thing and how it got spread out and how Twitter got big enough. But regardless, I digress. Uh, right yes. now, Jack Dorsey is the CEO of Twitter and also the CEO of a Square. Uh, oh, Square. Most of I don't know. his Square, monies Square pretty, yeah. are located in a Square. Uh, that's the Cash App famous cash, uh, yeah. application, which you can I use to cash buy Bitcoin and things like that. Huh? I have a Cash App card. Actually, uh, not to interrupt, but brief interlude. The Cash App cards look really sexy. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> it's like just... you. It's very hot. Yeah, man. It's it's just like me. Like they're made for me. They're just black, and you you can put your signature or a skull or whatever the fuck you want on it. So they're doing something right, but. He's still the asshole of the week. So please continue. Yeah. I'm sorry. Po- point being, uh, it- it's it's the same. I think I already said this, uh, but since this has been a problematic episode, uh, I'll just repeat it briefly. Uh, Facebook uh, went to the Congress or whatever Zuckerberg did uh, publicly, and he said that he was not going mm. to shut down any political uh, advertisements that they were going to allow it and that they were going to promote it freely. Whereas Jack Dorsey came forward and said, no, we're not allowing any political right. advertisements effective November the 22nd, I think. Uh, but the thing oh, is... okay. So actually, this- it's only Mark Zuckerberg that that is our asshole. I read that headline wrong. That, uh, <laughs> you know, our, our, our bullet point there. So... Jack Dorsey's actually the fucking hero, man. In this particular yeah, yeah. case. Even though I fucking I hate Twitter's new op- UI. <laughs> I read this opinion and I think the guy who wrote it, who is a journalist from BuzzFeed, BuzzFeed, I think he got it right. He's mm-hmm. just arguing that uh, Jack Dorsey got it right in a PR right. uh, standpoint because huh. he's like, uh, more for the people, more with the people, more of, uh, we don't need more politics, so on and forth. What's ironic Whereas, is, so, just, I'm sorry, is, is, is he stopping Trump's tweets? No, 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 no. And the point that this journalist was making is exactly that. That's what I was trying to, right. uh, get. Okay, to, okay. That Trump's tweets, uh, Putin's tweet, whatever, the, the big images of politics, mm-hmm. they are already making Twitter famous because there is not a single day in, and it's true. Uh, when I hop on Twitter and I don't see a, a Trump's tweet because <laughs> people follow him, because right. people like his tweets or retweet it. So the platform itself is already engaging those politicians and making them uh, like a big image and a representation of the product. Yeah, it's kind uh, of a on Facebook. They need to pay one leads Facebook to the other. Yeah, to have an actual impact on on what people see on their feed. Right, 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 right. Okay, 
this this makes sense now. Now now this is a clear argument. Okay, so you know we've always said fuck Mark Zuckerberg. So I just assume that anybody in the same sentence with Mark Zuckerberg was already an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so Dorsey is really in the right most most likely here. But still, Twitter's new UI fucking blows. Um, I I don't know what they're doing over there. <laughs> it's twitter and i'm actually not a fan of twitter myself i i know it's in te- it's integral for a lot of things in marketing but for somehow i've just never been to breakthrough same with reddit like whatever i post on reddit gets like immediately downvoted a thousand times no not really a thousand but i, I just can't break through because i'm not one of those people i'm not like i i, I don't know I don't know who, what type of people those are, but I guess I'm not one of them. Um, but anyways, I'm sure that you people have seen on Facebook, if you use Facebook, uh, the political ads specifically from the Trump administration asking basically, am I a good president? And that's the <laughs> most fucking like egotistical, like jerk off thing that you could think of. And it's the fucking president of the United States of America. What the fuck is wrong with this shit, man? Like, when, wh- how is this even possible? And why can't Mark Zuckerberg delineate between propaganda and free speech? They're, yeah. It's uh, fucking, Jesus Christ, man. This, I mean, this gets good. me heated, bro. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. I think you brought up a good question, a good point, uh, there, uh, uh, comparing propaganda and free speech. Uh, it, it's all right. Uh, I get you. I'm, I'm glad, uh, that I quit Facebook, uh, any Facebook mm, own right. thing. I'm not on WhatsApp. I'm not on Instagram. Of course, I'm not on Facebook. I, I quit all of those, uh, platforms. And right. I'm very happy to have done that. Because That's a lot of people need to do because, you know, we, as, as actually we, we, we explained before we started, you have to understand that these platforms are made to generate revenue for advertisers. They're not made to create opportunities for individuals and in, to connect people. They're made as an echo chamber to learn more about you, to find more about your buying habits and target you closer. And you are the product when you use Facebook or any of these platforms. So keep that yes, in because- mind when you when you click on a targeted ad or anything else like that. You're generating revenue for those people. I mean, I've I've done pay per click advertising before, but you know, man, the stories that I've read on Reddit actually, <laughs> what a coincidence! Uh, it's very, it it, it it's freak it freaks me out because people go uh, and post it. Like I was having a conversation with this buddy of mm. mine about a specific brand and shoes and my our phones were on the table on a standby oh, yeah. we were not even on instagram or facebook at all the time and the following day or within a few hours they pull up their facebook and their instagram and guess what i've heard of that the same fucking shoes and brands and anything they're right there so the microphones the permissions for the microphones on those applications are enabled and they yeah. are continuously listening in to serve you with uh, targeted ads. Yeah, That's they can do that even if your phone violation. is off. Even if your phone is off, they can they can activate the microphone. And I don't know if that's limited to to government, but I know that that's a thing because that's how uh the CIA uh, does covert surveillance on on other other countries and such you can activate the microphone on a phone that's completely off yeah, you know what you guys scary, gotta do man. right you I, guys I gotta it. put your phone in a ziploc bag and throw it into a uh into the toilet no we all need uh, nokia 4410s <laughs> man no Remember those mm, shits? recently snowden uh say the uh anybody or that he recommends or endorses doing this uh mm-hmm. Getting a pixel from Google. Right. Uh, I'm flashing graphing us. That's, oh, graphing. Uh, right, right, right. Yeah. Oh, there was another and, one that, I, that somebody was talking about. He recommended about today. that you should uh, physically 
uh, detach the microphone, the GPS, yes. and the Bluetooth chips. I think we've talked about this before, too. And it's funny, we're getting into privacy issues anyways, because uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, it, it's, uh, there's it's no like, way to like, actually physically turn off the microphone on your laptop, if, if, if you don't know that. You can mute it, but the only way to turn it off is to physically disconnect it from the internal components. <laughs> and that's something pretty fucking scary, if you think about it. Hey, on, on that topic, I saw a... Um uh, video on uh, what you call it unbox therapy uh he feature a uh a laptop that has a physical button where you could turn off your camera your wireless and your microphone or something like that it's completely well, like a I switch put tape over over any camera or you know like my cell phone camera the one that faces me i put tape over it uh laptop camera tape you know um microphones not much you can do. Actually, you can plug in. You can plug in a, uh, an adapter, and it would technically stop the internal microphone. Uh, uh, in theory, I don't know if it actually works, but but conceivably that 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 sounds like a solution, uh, uh, an easy solution. But obviously, yeah. there's probably, you know, you think so? Just you Those know, like plug an adapter in up, and that, that doesn't have anything connected to it and it will it, it will assume that there's a microphone plugged in attempt to pick it up but receive nothing i guess that that could be plausible do you guys watch breaking bad i watched all of breaking bad it was a gimmick yeah. show have, it was a well, good show well, Ron, you need to watch it it's a great show oh come on man you're like you're back in in 2009 here it's like yo did you see uh chicago hope I even I never I never watched that show, but I, I know it's old. Either. We're like, do you ever watch Frasier? <laughs> oh my god, that, Frasier is fucking awesome. Frasier was good, man. Frasier Crane, dude, he was he was, he was, he was badass, dude. <laughs> Anyways, but you're not talking about current topics here. If 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 uh, if you want to say talk about a good show, actually Breaking Bad. Yes, I enjoyed it, but it was gimmicky. It was it was filled with tricks. Uh, you know, gratuitous violence meant, meant to shock you. The better show of Vince Gilligan's two is Better Call Saul. And a lot of people don't hate it because it's good drama. It's great acting. And yeah, that's it's, a good one it's too. a compelling story. And it's not filled with, with gimmicks and, and stupid shit. It's a little shit. slow though. That you have oh, to yeah, admit, it's, it's a little it's slow, slow in the saying beginning. It's slow because it's not like Breaking Bad, but that's yeah, exactly. exactly why it's good. Well, the reason I brought up Breaking Bad was burner phones, you know. Maybe oh, burner phones. we all need burner phones. Yeah, in California, let me tell you this, okay? This, uh, if if you are on food stamps, for example, if you go to the social service office, there's a company that I don't know who the fuck they are. I think it's called Freedom Phone. We call them Obama phones, actually. <laughs> and, yeah, we've called them Obama phones for a while, but. If you have food stamps, you can get a, a, a new phone every year and the, the SIM card lasts for two years. And, uh, and those are fucking burner phones, but, uh, it's fucking weird. That's something well, in California, in Los Angeles. I don't know if it's an entire California, but I've actually met f few people that get those old school Nokia phones that are thick. 4410s, uh, bro. Don't... <laughs> They have the snake game, and yeah, they don't snake. have any GPS, any data, any uh, wi uh, Wi-Fi. And you can get a prepaid SIM card that you put in, and you can pay mm -hmm. for the SIM card in cash. Yeah, there is no there is no tracing for you. The only yeah. way that they can track you down is that if they happen to be cracking down on you, and they are actually doing some tracing on with your, your actual cell phone. But you, even you, if yeah. they're doing that. There is no way that they can link your identity uh, with you because you pay for the SIM card in cash, and mm. every month you walk in the store and you recharge with cash again. If you want to stay under off the record, you just do that, and that way you can have a phone number and you can have text messages. Yeah, that's actually an awesome point. Um, <laughs> to tell you the truth, most mostly drug dealers do things <laughs> like that. Yeah, uh, that's and where the Fed's gonna hide in the store, the but, phone store. 
back to the Obama phones, what people usually do, because obviously uh, in California, there's a lot of heroin use. Well, there's a lot of drug use everywhere in the United States. We're, this is the king of drug use or the, the I don't know if, if if the United States were a person, it would be the king of drug use. Anyways, uh, in Los Angeles, there's a lot of uh, home. Actually, 60 percent of California's homeless are in Los Angeles. So what they'll do is they'll get these Obama phones and they'll sell them to drug dealers. But what my question is, what if they're, uh, what if they're tracking these phones and, and they're just being given away for free as, as surveillance devices? I mean, they're Android devices. They're not very simple ones. They're actually ZTE of all things. And you know what, what happened with ZTE in America, there was that, uh, scandal that, uh, were they made in Korea? No, I think they're made in China. Anyways, wherever they're made, um, they claim to have spyware and stuff in them, which was, was, no, those are HTCs too, uh, which was completely unfounded. Um, you know, anyways. So the best choice, if you want to be secure, yeah, is to get one of those older phones, uh, Nokia 3310, or uh, I was saying 4410 before earlier, but uh, I think they're 3310s or 30. 3210s, but it's that same number generation that they used for, for all those little brick phones. Uh, you may oh. not want it, but you may not want to be private either, so whatever. So, moving on, we have only a few more things to talk about. We got like 15 minutes left, and, and we got through a lot of cool subjects so far, didn't we, guys? Yeah, we did. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, yep. I like it. I dig it. I can dig it. Dig it. So, Yo, all right. I ch- check this out. I mean, every Thursday when I search for topics on this show, a new Doomsday Asteroid article comes up. This is becoming like a trend, okay? And this one is a Halloween edition. So uh, this week, spooky ha- Halloween asteroid flyby, and it's one of the closest near misses ever has been seen. So, uh, yeah, an asteroid came by, let me see how long, within, within, uh, 6,200 kilometers of the closest approach to, to orbit or, or, uh, what is it? 35,000 kilometers in altitude. So it almost hit us. It almost, we almost died. We almost became the fucking dinosaurs, guys. And the, the tardigrades are the only, the only ones left. In the volcanic whatevers, I forget what they're called. And then they would probably eventually evolve and we'd have uh, tardigrade TV, tardigrade Breaking Bad. But yeah, I mean, but what is this trend every single week about these new asteroids? It's not like fucking astronomy is new. It's not like we, 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 we can't really see what's going on. I mean, it's it's... Uh, these things move very fast, obviously, but uh, uh, space is not like hidden. It's not like a, a a cloak. I mean, if you see depictions of space combat in sci-fi series, uh, you know, let's say you're you're um, let's say I don't know two million miles away from a spaceship, but you can still see it, and you have a weapon, whatever. If you can see that ship, you can fucking hit it and destroy it. It's not like, you know, it's going to come out of the blue. There's nothing in the way. You just have vast nothingness. Some planets, some rocks, some shit. I mean, space is extremely, extremely vast and full of space. So why are they fucking just continuing to to berate us with with, uh, these these, these, uh, doomsday asteroids every week? I wonder. <laughs> you know, it, it's easy to control people if there is uh, discord, if there is problems. Mm-hmm. Once you oh, yeah. score problematic uh, societies, you can divide them. Once you can divide them, you can confront them. They're once definitely you, doing once that they're now, confronting yeah. each other, the, you pretty much lay back, see how they tear themselves up, and just enjoy the movie. Yeah, and and also, um, 
it's been proven uh, that that basically the 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 introduction of fear makes people purchase more as well. That that's that's also a driver because people want an escape, and it also it also creates uh, it rises uh, uh, drug use, recreational drug use, because people are scared. I mean, and if you don't if you don't see the connection, then then I don't know. Maybe you're blind, but I mean, I'm not talking about you guys, but our listeners or anybody out there, you know, it's, it's very apparent that this, this stuff is meant to, to, to provoke people and to have uh, creating a, a mindset of fear so they can be manipulated and controlled to the, to, to, to the desire of whoever is doing this specific manipulation. At least that, that, that's, that's, that's a, 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 a good theory, you know? You think so? I guess. Oh man, we just cut out. I thought we just cut out again because that was like the ultimate truth that that they didn't want anybody to know. I mean, it's not even that groundbreaking. I mean, you just have to have logic. But uh, <laughs> yeah, shit's crazy, man. Yo, so I check this out. I found this article. Um. You know, they obviously genetically engineer organisms now. So they have this test. Lab grown organoids are more stressed out than actual brain cells. So, um, the brain cells that they genetically manipulate are like, how the fuck did we get here? Imagine being like a disembodied head just appearing in the world. <laughs> I think that's what it is. No, but, uh, yeah. Brain cells grown into clumps and flasks. Uh, they're apparently stressed out and confused. And I really don't blame them. Did you? I mean... You guys still there? Yep. Man, you, you, gotta, you have to be more active because I think you're cutting out now because of this conspiracy. Please. Throw me some line here. I thought we're done. Are we now, done? What? Did I say? I said we had 15 minutes left. Now we have... Mm, seven minutes left. Jeez, man. Uh, uh, terrible. I believe we got five minutes on... I'm just fucking about poster, but No, I've got, 20, a, I've got a clock running seconds. here, man. I've got a clock running on, on, on butt. Believe it or not, I broadcast through this thing called butt, which means broadcast using this tool, but I refuse to put it in my toolbar... Because it just looks fucking weird. <laughs> Does it have a butt icon on it? No. <laughs> but, man, developers, man, I, I don't know. So, software developers. No. Oh, I... <laughs> you know? <laughs> but, anyway. Prince, before yes. I forget, uh, I mm. think I side with you on... Mm -hmm. sure that I bring this up again. I'm sorry, P Prince. I talk about this again, but I think I side with you on on saying that the Mac OS just works and it works nicely and it's easy to get by. Uh, I get it. Uh, if you want to go into audio producing mm -hmm. and graphic design right, right, right. and just multimedia uh, production. I think Mac OS, it's smart. It's the, I would say the, the easiest path to re, to get a quality job. And right. Poopster was saying that it's better to go with the ThinkPad because it's modular. It's the open. Too, you can get anything on there. Yeah. And it, both sides are right. Right. So instead of saying, no, you should use it. Let's respect everybody's freedom. If hey, you man, want to use I, that I and that works for that. you, just do it. Just if do the it. other guy wants to go with ThinkPad, just do it. But stop fighting because of silly things. It, it, I agree. We're not man. fighting. Well, I agree. We're I totally well, agree. We're Rotten friends. Sox has it on the nose. But we're stop not fighting though. Fighting we're just about uh, silly things. I just see a problem that uh, that he's having a lot of problem with his. Uh, Apple product. Well, yeah, I, I got I an expensive computer. And it probably cost a lot to fix it. I didn't get a ThinkPad because I, I, I do what I do, man. Well, like I said, it's uh, it's it's 
for me, it's a cost thing, you know? Uh, yeah. Well, okay. Let me, if let me someone add one like, more thing to this. Give me a Mac OS laptop. Okay, wait, I'm wait, fine wait. with it. But if I want to buy it myself, nah, okay. never, never. Okay, but. you don't work in in audio or or, yeah, exactly. uh, or recording. Okay, that's the, whole the industry point. works <laughs> on Macs, so collaboration is close to impossible unless you break down stems of every track, and then you have to send the the wave files to to whoever the Pro Tools producer with the the. the giant Pro Tools still is. And also, if you have a software digital audio converter versus a uh, a digital, uh, a hardware digital audio converter, they're called DAX, D-I-C. Um, that's also another thing altogether that you'll never be able to sync up a track because the times are different that, that are, that are, because obviously you have to convert analog to digital. Uh, and, and the latency is so slight that you'll never get an exact link. But, that has nothing to do with Mac and PC, but that's just another issue altogether. But the fact that you cannot collaborate with major studios without a Mac is is a large issue of why most producers and artists use Mac PCs. Yeah. So let's just get you when another Mac, Mac is OS. Is Mac PCs a contradiction? <laughs> Mac computers? Is that what you call them? I don't know. Because Macs aren't PCs, are they? <laughs> As they say in the 80s, get a Dell, dude. <laughs> oh, fuck Dell, man. Remember Gateway? Yeah, I hate my Dell for work. Gateway 2000? My first, my first Windows computer, or my first 486 computer, was, was a Packard Bell th- uh, 4633. <laughs> SX. No floating point unit. Couldn't play MP3s. Yeah, bro. Shit is real. Microsoft Encarta. <laughs> I don't think um, my, I don't think Encarta was even out back there. But what was your first computer, Rotten? Before uh, we end, let's just give us some uh, quick shit. Uh, it was uh, I don't know a Pentium One, I guess. Uh, it was in the late nineties, I believe. It was like a thirty-three or a ninety. And uh, I was using these fifty-two. Uh, kilobyte per second internet you mm. know the so, old yeah. school thing that if you uh pick up your phone line uh, the yeah, internet yeah, drops too, my and backwards my first yeah. one was 2400 baud that was yep. the, that was the packard bell but i had i had uh 336 as well as 56k later on but yeah man that shit was painfully slow <laughs> mine was a pentium too uh like a uh, back when Best Buy was the place you get the Pentium as the brand was Ace. Did they shut us down again? No. <laughs> Did he just cut out like randomly? Back then it was that much. Ace? Uh, yes, Poopster, you cut out. I, I heard Ace and that was it. A- oh, my first computer that I actually bought back then in the... uh. I think it was uh, around mid nineties. Was yeah, uh, yes. uh, what brand was it? Acer. Yes. Okay. Just making sure. From Best you Buy. Penny, cost man. me cost me twenty six hundred dollars. Oh Fancy. fuck, man, that's insane. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay, I want to be real. Okay, my first computer was actually a TRS eighty. Uh, I don't remember which version, but it was the one of them with uh, where the keyboard was was the the unit, and you just had a, mon- a monochrome monitor with it. And you would load programs onto it with cassette tapes, and uh, and you would program in BASIC to create programs. And um, that was my literal first computer. But I don't consider it that because to me it was something completely different. Like that that was a new world for me. Like when when whatever age I was, I mean, I think I might have been twelve. I don't know. My dad got it for me because my dad was really into sci-fi and technology. I mean, he didn't know much about it. He was a mechanic, but. Uh, but you know, I definitely credit my dad for for, for getting me into this, that that kind of stuff. So, um, but yeah, man, early computing, fucking thirty three six k, fifty six k, Pentium twos. I actually have a Pentium two chip in my desk drawer here that I want to make like some sort of necklace out of or fucking do something with. I mean, I don't know. It, I've got like tons of free- sticks of RAM in this in this desk drawer. I've got a ton of shit, man. Like it's it's freaking awesome. I I think uh, witnessing the evolution of the computers and 
the cell phones and everything. It's been a a very delightful uh, story. <laughs> You're right. Actually, um, I'm going to close on on this particular point. Uh, let me see if I could figure this spe- uh, find the specific article, but. Uh, I, we might have even talked about this before because, uh, it's about the, the simulation hypothesis. And, uh, someone had brought to me an article about, uh, simulation, uh, digital simulation of the cubic meter. Let me see if I can find it here. I got it somewhere. Okay. So basically, if you think about it, you know, in the 80s, we were playing Pong, you know, simple pixels on a screen. This year, you know, today we have like Call of Duty, VR, et cetera, et cetera. So we're pretty advanced from where we were. Imagine what we're going to have 20 years in the future. So uh, they're reaching close to perfect simulations of one cubic meter, which uh, uh, it's a supercomputer simulation called Lattice Quantum Chromodynamics. Uh, it divides space-time into four dimensions uh, with, you know, resolutions based on physical laws. So it can it simulates little tiny portions extremely accurately. So, you know, as we have it now, it's kind of like a fractal uh, composed to a bitmap image that you zoom in on and what you see is the pixels. So with accurate simulation of the cubic meter, you would not be able to distinguish a simulation from reality. So, I mean, they're estimating, I believe, by, by you know, 2130, 2140. Uh, can, it can be, they can simulate uh, this cubic meter in perfect detail so you wouldn't be able to tell from from... Uh, reality. So what this would lead to would be holodeck style things like Star Trek. It would be totally possible. And uh, we would have simulations that would be no different no uh, different than than what we see as reality. And the only thing that I see as 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 a a barrier in this particular goal that someone has is that th- that you'd have to have some sort of sensory a uh, full sensory connection as well. I mean, you're still going to know it's not reality if 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 you see or if you hear and smell and feel uh, mainly if you can't feel the world that that you're you're looking at um it's kind of an indication that it's not real. But who knows? We got dreams too. So that was what I wanted to end on. You guys have anything else to add? I'm good. Uh, if if you got the chance, just uh, catch up with Mr. Robert. Uh, catch up with Billions. Uh, those oh, are two yeah. good series uh, going on recently. Oh, Mr. Robot, I know Pooster watches man. both. I love They're Mr. Cool. Robot. I haven't actually watched any of the, of, of uh, this new season yet because I I like to wait and just hold on for for. I have wait till I have a bunch of them. But man, that's been a great one, dude. They even have free node on uh on Mr. Robot. Someone was oh saying- man, the the last episode, I think it was the third. Uh oh. Mm-hmm. Uh it, it it was awesome because uh one of the ca- spoil uh, actors me. actresses actually, uh the FBI agent goes on free node and he, she goes on pound pound sex. Oh yeah, that's up- right. And that room actually exists, but it redirects somewhere else or something. Yes, yes. And, <laughs> and the actual username that she was uh, under, it's actually in the room. No I shit. was like, what the fuck? Man. Yo, what synchronicity. That's This is why I like Mr. Robot. I mean, there are accurate dis- depictions of, of technology and Linux systems. Uh, I mean, I, you don't really... Remember, remember the movie Hackers? <laughs> Obviously, you guys remember the movie Hackers. Yeah. I mean, Hack the Gibson. I mean, that was so horribly inaccurate. I mean, it's iconic, sure. I mean, uh, I still like it, but fuck, man, that shit was so inaccurate. I mean, eh. Hackers? It is what it is. 
It is what it is. Yeah. No, I'm just saying like that that was way back in the day, man. They didn't have much CGI capability. Remember the the 3D operating system that he would like navigate through for the oil tankers and shit? Yes, sir. It was well, that was so like unrealistic for what technology we had at the time. <laughs> <sighs> well, uh, I think I'm done with, for the night. Thank you very yes. much for having me on again. Uh, if anybody wants to hit me up, I'm always on Reddit and Twitter as yes, Rod and Will. Will at Rod and Will. Uh, we'll catch up any other episode uh, moving forward. And yes, sir. That's about it. That's about it. With that note, my friends, we're going to uh, you know we're going to leave you. We're going to leave you with. Uh, a warm, happy feeling that everything fucking sucks. No, I'm joking. <laughs> happy Halloween. <laughs> happy Halloween. Everything's cool if you make it, man. You know, it's the power of the brain. You know, our eyes project our reality. No, that's not true. It's a theory of mine. <laughs> whatever. But whatever. Have a good night. Have a Bye-bye. good night, guys. And uh, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. And uh, See ya. Bye-bye. Bye bye. This has been brought to you by the Holy Roger Coin. Now tradable on Art Markets, AltMarkets.io. To get free Holy Roger Coin, participate in airdrops on Twitter with the Holy Roger Consortium. Come get it, motherfuckers. Get them while it's mu- fresh. Get it while it's fresh. Because when the difficulty goes up, you're shit out of luck. And there ain't going to be no more Rogers for nobody. We just rebranded. We give a shout out to my homie. Little C. Big T. Mikey B.